Good morning from sunny Phuket, Thailand. My name is Walter Johnson. I will be demonstrating today one component of the dive response, heart rate reduction. What you see on my finger is a pulse oximeter. It measures heart rate, the one that's 52 right now, and blood saturation, oxygen saturation, which is 98 right now. That would be 98%. That's a fairly normal uh, resting reading. Uh, uh, goes down a lot during the breath hold. One interesting fact though is it doesn't start dropping for quite a while after the breath hold starts. For me it starts dropping in a four minute time frame and uh, I've got a headed as low as 75% at the end of a six and a half minute breath hold. Uh, I, don't know, I, I haven't measured past that so I don't know but uh, it goes down a lot let's say. Pulse also uh, changes during breath hold, uh, both when you're on land and when you're in the water. Uh, when you're on land, it's uh, it just drops. To, uh, I don't know the exact physical reason it drops, but your the, the the body's response to a breath hold, I think, to some extent. But I'm not sure of the physical reasons. At depth, there's a couple things going on, and I think I demonstrated one of those things this morning. Uh, when you're doing a dive, when you're doing a breath hold, reduction in use of uh, breathing muscles, diaphragm, chest wall, heart rate reduction, direct one-to-one -one correlation. Uh, the relaxation component, uh, reduction in demand of the heart, heart rate reduction. Uh, mental component, little biofeedback component, heart rate reduction. Another thing going on I think is uh, when you're at depth you have pressure on your body, your whole body compresses, your chest is compressed a little bit, your legs and arms are compressed and they're like sponges so the blood gets pushed up into your lungs. It's called thoracic filling. Just the ocean pushing blood from your legs and arms into your chest. That's all it is. To the extent that your chest resists that movement of blood, I think, your heart is allowed to fill some of that volume in the chest and reduces, reduces stroke volume and, or excuse me, increases stroke volume and thereby reduces pulse. So there's a relaxation component. There's, I believe, there's a, a uh, reduction in chest wall uh, pressure component. There's a uh, also a water component. I'm sure that uh, people have shown that you get some dive response from just being in the water. But I couldn't measure that today. So uh, this is what you got. So anyway, here we go. Gonna try to drive my heart rate down. See what happens. No doc, not a heart attack. <laughs> uh, that really was 33 beats per minute. Uh, you can see the rambling waveform toward the end there. Uh, you can see it now. It screams up pretty fast when you're done. Doc, uh, next time I do an ECG, <laughs> I'm coming, okay? <laughs> I want to see the look on your face when you see 32 beats per, 33 beats per minute on the ECG. 
I want to see the shade of green in your face turn. So I do that. <laughs> anyway, hope this has been educational a little bit. Uh, you can reduce your heart rate. Uh, it is reduced in a dive for a lot of reasons. I think it's reduced uh, partially because of the reduction in chest wall pressure on the heart relative to the rest of the body. Uh, not a, a perfectly scientific demonstration, I'm sure, but uh, best I can do under the circumstances. And uh, I hope it's been educational. Some ideas, if they are controversial, please uh, feedback. After all, we're all here to learn, right? Have a nice day. Goodbye from sunny, beautiful Phuket, Thailand. <laughs>